Hello everyone welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel please subscribe to my YouTube channel, so you can join our tech family. If it is informative to you please like our video share it with your friends so they can get help with these video and don't forget to press all notification bell icon so you get regular update and don't miss our any single video. So I'm sure that everyone is familiar with GPS or Global Positioning Systems. We know that these are big old satellites that are up in space, right? And they help to determine where we're located or where something is located. Well, taking this technology along with wireless technology, we can actually go out and hit the road and start mapping out some networks that either we can remember for ourselves or share with others. Now, again, the GPS receiver is going to just simply go through and calculate position, time, velocity to help pinpoint where the network is located. Now, some of the tools that we can use for this include, I mentioned Wiggle already, and I'm going to show you Wiggle here in just a second. But we also have Skyhook. Now, Skyhook is a big data company that's based out of Boston, Massachusetts. And originally, they were started up as a database for gathering access points for war driving folks. Since then, they've gone on to provide location-based services for companies like Apple, Samsung, Sony, HP, Dell, and almost any of the mapping products out there like MapQuest. And some of these concepts or these applications come around from the aspect of marketing. For example, when you walk into your local retail store, maybe Skyhook has determined via your Samsung device that you're at the local, I don't know, butcher market, and you get an ad for that butcher. But again, using their technology for evil, we can accomplish some interesting things. We also have something called Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is just a little simple program that helps you to find Wi-Fi hotspots. You can either install it, search out hotspots near you. You can send the information up to their database. You can also type in an address of where you're trying to uh, go to to see if any Wi-Fi is going to be available there for you as well. But enough talk, Dale. Let's do some more driving. Okay, let's hop in the car. I'm going to take you for a ride and we'll uh, see what we can see here. So when it comes to war driving, the overall concept is, is I'm going to cover a lot of area and try to pick up as many accessible access points that I can or networks that are exposed. It's kind of interesting that with, when it comes to Wi-Fi, we don't really realize how prevalent it is in our world. Now, granted, we have our uh, devices that we all hook up to Wi-Fi, but you start multiplying that by the number of people that are around you and you end up with a ton of um, wireless transmissions going on everywhere around you. So I once had a gentleman from Raylink come out to visit us because we were getting some interference back when I had my own ISP service. And we couldn't figure out where the interference was coming from. And he brought out what we refer to as a spectrum analyzer with him. And it basically showed him all the wireless that was around us, whether it was 2.4 gigahertz, whether it was 5 gigahertz, whether it was a microwave. It was kind of interesting because he told me, he said, you know what, we can't see wireless around us. But if we could see it, and you could assign a color to each frequency, we would see a rainbow all around us. And when you start thinking about how many wireless devices you have in your home, average is about 13 devices per house. Think about that, 13 devices per house. And most homes have anywhere from obviously one to two Wi-Fi access points. So the question comes in is, are they securing those down? And it's not just residential folks, but it's also businesses, especially small businesses that don't have a full-time IT person that can go through and make sure that things are locked down for us. So when it comes to war driving, we're not necessarily just looking for standard Wi-Fi access points. We can also use this technique to find Bluetooth. Now think about that one for a second. Bluetooth, what do we sync with Bluetooth nowadays if I'm driving down the road? Yeah, our cars. Do we not upload our address book to our cars so that we can make wireless calls or hands-free calls? Well, literally driving down the road, I can pick up, Bluetooth, pick up a Bluetooth signal from the car next to me. All I have to do is keep pace with him. And if he's not secure enough, I can download his address book or possibly upload a piece of malicious software that executes on his device that allows me then to pwn his environment. So number one rule when we're using Bluetooth is we turn it off unless we absolutely positively need it.
Now, when it comes to wireless, our goal for war driving is again to go through an area and pick up which access points are where, whether they're open or closed, because that helps me to assign my target. When I'm choosing my target, I'm gonna go after things like the most common aspects like default uh, SSIDs. But if I come across a retail location, like a bank, even though they may be locked down, I'm going to try to figure out what SSID that they're using so that I can go after and maybe intercept some of the transmissions going on within that business itself. Now, back in the old days, when we did war driving, we had to use laptops. We still use laptops, uh, but it's kind of interesting how technology has changed things because now we can actually do war driving with our phones as well as with our tablets. That's what I'm gonna to attempt to do here is, didn't bring my laptop, decided to try to do this with a tablet instead. So I'm gonna be using a program called Wiggle, which is kind of an open project where I can use the application to map out my neighborhood and find out what access points and then upload those to the Wiggle servers and then everybody else around me or other attackers or even just hobbyists can uh, see what's going on in that area. Got a neighborhood coming up here. Let's pull in and see what we can find out with my, just with my tablet, now mind you. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my cell phone as a access point for my tablet because my tablet doesn't have internet access. Uh, and I have my own access point set up for that. So you're gonna see that pop up. So the application I'm using is called, again, Wiggle. And you can see here that I've got the bat signal, which is my own phone. That's what's giving me internet access so I can then upload this information if I need to. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for access points that might give me a direction or a concept of um, who's using what. Uh, primarily what I'll be focusing in on is those people that are still using the default SSID for access points like Linksys or D-Link or Netgear. Uh, I might also look for things like access points named after people's homes. So I'm gonna start off here. Right now, I just pulled over, I'm picking up 16 access points. So we're gonna just drive down here a bit and see what we can pick up. 17, new Wi-Fi 16, new cell zero from 41.6 feet, 9.55 a.m., battery 26%. Now, normally when you're war driving, you wanna stay at a pretty low speed, under 35 miles an hour, just because you need time for the device to pick up those access points as you're driving by. If I was doing this on a freeway, it wouldn't make any sense unless I was trying to pick up the Wi-Fi access point off of a car, which cars are now coming with wireless internet on them. Now, the cool thing about Wiggle 2 is it links into Google Maps. So I'll be able to actually see this in a Google map environment. That's what makes it really easy for me to share information. And also for me to, if somebody's already hit this area, it makes it easy for me to see what's going on or what my possible targets would be. So a lot of people think, well, it's my wife wireless access point. Who really cares about my home network? Again, you have to remember the goal of the attacker is not necessarily to get a hold of your information, but maybe also get a hold of your resources. I have a good friend of mine who has a dog and the dog did not bark hardly ever at all and one night he woke up and the dog was just barking like crazy and he went to go see what the dog was barking at the dog was looking out the front window so he looked out the window and what he saw was uh, a car with two individuals inside and because it was dark it was like two in the morning he saw a glow kind of like what you would see in the movies you know uh, of a laptop and he thought to himself why are people in front of my house um, with a laptop. And because he's in IT, he went, oh crap. So he ran downstairs, he unplugged his wireless network, but about 15 seconds later, sure enough, they drove off. And I'm really glad that he didn't recognize me. So remember, you're a number, you're a resource to attackers. I don't care if you have a bazillion dollars in the bank or if you got $5 in the bank, I'm gonna get at you somehow. Okay, so I've driven about a mile and not in just one direction. I've actually weaved in and out throughout this neighborhood here. And within the one mile distance that I traveled, um, I have 103 access points. I guarantee there's not 103 homes in this environment. Um, one of the Line things- 107, new Wi-Fi 105, new cell zero from 1.3 miles, 10.02 AM, battery 24%. Let me turn off the audio here. 
And so one of the things I want to do is you can see here that I've got a couple of different access points. And one of them that I'm kind of interested in here is the one that says Netgear Guest. Now, as far as these icons are concerned, you'll see these fluctuating a bit here. The green ones tell me that they're locked down. Red ones would represent then a uh, open access point. Now, a lot of people realize that it's open, and what they rely on is something called MAC filtering, which we've talked about in previous modules. That MAC filtering is not a secure way of securing down your network, because all I have to do is tell my tablet or my laptop to be the same MAC address that has access to the access point, and I'm gonna pwn you. So you can see here, I've got like Flying Dutchman, I've got Honey, oh, there's a MyQuest, there's a Buffalo G, which was probably a Buffalo router. There's Netgear Guest. Again, that's that's one I want to take a look at probably. Um, that one happens to be WPA enabled and uh, locked down. There's also a Belkin one listed here. It's going in and out. The reason why it's going in and out is because I'm not quite close enough to sink in. So I'm going to drive up here a little bit further and see if I can't lock in to a, a better target. Okay, so I'm coming up on one here. It's called Linksys. Gee, I wonder what access point that is. So you'll notice it's in red. If I click on it, it opens it up in Google Maps as well as gives me some additional feedback as far as the signal strength. Um, it gives me the MAC address of the device. And by the way, this application, if you think hiding your SSID is gonna stop me, it'll look at those too. It'll discover those as well. And you can see here, I also have an ability to connect um, I don't have permission to connect to the network because that would be illegal, so I'm going to cancel that. But if I was doing something malicious, um, I would obviously hook in and I would probably be able to see some of their devices they have on their network. So what's really nice is with WiggleNet, what they've done is they've taken advantage of what Google has done. Google, if you guys all know, when they do their little Google car that goes around and gets street view, Google was actually capturing Wi-Fi access points. And that's one of the things that I can do with my Android device is I can say, please help me find where I'm at uh, via GPS, as well as help me triangulate via access points. Well, because of that, what you're seeing on the map here shows me the address of what a combination of my signal strength plus what Google Maps had mapped out for me already. Now, this application in tablet mode uh, doesn't allow me to actually fully connect in. Uh, if I had my laptop, I would be able to just pop right in. The other thing I can do here with this application is I mentioned that it's an open uh, project. If I go back here, I have this button up at the top left that says upload to WiggleNet, which allows me to upload what I've discovered to the network, as well as I can download what other people have discovered in the area or kind of clean up, I guess, the records if somebody hasn't been out here in a while. And it allows us to then, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my little world map here. You can see all the access points and where they're located here. So you can see there's a couple of Netgear access points. Now typically the question in comes up, Gail, how do I protect myself from this? You can't. It goes back to that aspect of, I know the danger, but I'm willing to accept the danger for the payoff. Just like I know the danger of driving a car. I have a really high risk of getting in a car accident, obviously the more I drive in my car, but I'm willing to take on that risk. I know about other drivers. I protect myself, hopefully from other drivers by defensively driving. So as IT security specialists, we need to make sure that we take advantage of every single feature that different routers, and you should research your routers, find out which ones are more vulnerable than others but we need to look at each one of those features and use every single feature. Because again, remember, you can't stop an attacker. Your job is to slow them down. We hope you enjoyed the video and found value in the content. We value your feedback. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to post them in the comments section or contact us directly by our social platforms. Thanks for watching.